next thing these Greeks noticed was that when they built a ramp, when they went to put supports in it, an interesting thing happened. If they went up, let's say, two cubits, which was some kind of measurement, for a particular angle, they noticed that this was one cubit. And if they went up two more cubits, so now it's a total of four cubits, that this was, in fact, two cubits in height. And if they continued up, no matter how far they went up, the ratio of the length of this triangle and the height to the triangle was the same thing. That ratio, when they divided it out, turned out to be a number. And they gave that number a name. They called it the sine of that particular angle. So math teachers have introduced this concept that they call this the hypotenuse. The side that's opposite the angle they call the opposite. And the side that's adjacent the angle they call the adjacent. And so the rule that they taught you was that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And really it's just a ratio. The Greeks discovered it. It wasn't some mathematical trick. It was just a ratio that for a particular angle, no matter how far along the hypotenuse, when you drew the support side, the opposite side, the ratio was always the same. You can go experiment with it with little rulers and draw it out yourself and it'll work. So it's not a magic formula. If you wanted to find out what that angle was, you would say that the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and that gives you the the ratio and you can look it up on a sign table or you could hit the inverse sign button on your calculator sine negative one here's the sign button and here's the inverse sign button I'll focus a little different because it's higher than my board so to find an angle it's always the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and hit the sine to the negative one button. Sine to the negative one. There it goes. That's how you can find the angle using the opposite side and the hypotenuse. If you had a triangle where the opposite side or the supporting side of a ramp was 0.5 meters and the ramp itself or the hypotenuse was one meter then the angle could be found, well the sine of the angle would be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. 0.5 meters divided by 1 meter, meters cancel out, the sine of the angle would be equal to 0.5. Now you could look it up on a trig table or you could get out your calculator and you could say uh, the inverse sine of 0.5 and it would tell you that it was 30 degrees. Assuming of course your calculator is in degree mode. So the angle would be equal to the inverse sine of 0.5. The angle would be 30 degrees. And This is how you use the sine function. The other application is if you have a ramp of some angle and uh, you've got some support the opposite side and you decide you want to put another support in you could measure this distance here we'll call it a new hypotenuse just to make sure our variables are the same and this new opposite side is the unknown so if the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, then the opposite can be equal to the sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. And so uh, let's say this is half a meter and we're going to stay with 30 degrees. So the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 times half a meter would give us an opposite side equal to a quarter or 0.25 meters. So by using our algebra we can get the opposite side by itself and we can find uh, an opposite side. So this is equally useful in physics, finding the opposite side.
well, as long as we're here, let's suppose we want to build a ramp, and we know we want the elevation to be three meters high. We're going to maintain 30 degrees, and so we're looking for how long a plank do we need, the hypotenuse, once again. So we go back to algebra, we say that the hypotenuse is equal to the opposite side divided by the sine of our angle. So that leaves us uh, 3 meters divided by the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0.5, or a hypotenuse of 6 meters. So we've been able to find all three sides of a triangle, well the two sides we're interested in for sine anyway, the hypotenuse and the opposite side, and the angle using the sine function.